Alright, hey there and welcome to our third video on line boring here at Rottler. We're working on the EM79 and we're going to show you the actual cutting operation after we've done the uh, setup and the programming. Go ahead and if you haven't already, check out part one and part two. Part one goes over the setup for setting up a block on our line bore pivot table and part two shows you how to program a line bore operation inside the Rottler software. So our final step here and the fun part is to go ahead and cut these bores. What I like to do is set my cutter up so it's just under uh, basically, you know, maybe five or six thou undersized uh, minimum of what I would be cutting to. Um, and I want to just basically take a witness pass, a little skim pass, and make sure that the program looks right and, uh, and then I can measure that and adjust on my boring micrometer as I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. And this, for anyone who's not familiar, is our uh, tool holder with the insert in it. We're using our RT321 today. So I'll set it in the boring mic. I'm just gonna adjust this here on my boring mic uh, so I'm just undersized. Tighten that. Now when you go to put these in to the right angle drive, just to, as well as our boring heads, the little spring post on the back that we used to adjust it, to set the diameter, uh, you wanna be careful when you put this into the tool itself, the right angle drive, um, because if you push this in too hard, you're gonna compress that and you're gonna be cutting significantly undersized uh, from where you are. So I always like to be real careful and I'll just slide them in just till I feel it touch. Put a little tension on there. Sometimes you can even use your thumb to brace against the cutter head body. Slug that down. So now we're here inside our line board program that we set up from part two. And what we want to do is we're just going to have this first cylinder bore turned on. So yellow means it won't cut any of these holes. Green means it'll cut that first one. So I just want to run the first one and I'm just going to let it, it's going to mostly cut air. I just want to make sure that the program's right. When I press start auto cycle on Rottler machines, the hand wheel, and we've got our hand wheel here on our remote jog hand wheel. When you spin this hand wheel counterclockwise, that's going to control the feed rate to override it. So whenever I start a program, I hit start auto cycle, and I'm going to immediately spin that hand wheel down. Uh, going back clockwise will increase the feed rate, so I can come in real slow and make sure that it's moving to the positions that I programmed. See the spindle turn it on, and once I'm there at the bottom uh, in the location, then I'll give it full feed rate, 100%. And like I say, we're just cutting air right now because we just wanted to make sure and we're checking the program. We want to make sure this goes all the way through to the other side uh, and make sure that it retracts out right. That's just to make sure before we go down and do these sequential mains, we want to make sure that this is going to operate correctly and we're not going to have any crashes. And you'll see it'll pull away. And it retracts back up. So as long as I've seen that first hole run correctly, now I can take my cutter back out if I had just done a witness mark in there, I'd measure it one more time. Uh, and I can adjust it to go to my finished diameter or just under if I want to leave a little bit on it and sneak up on it. So we'll just turn this back around. 7.30 seconds Allen key. I'm going to hop over to my boring micrometer and set this. And we'll put it back in and then we'll let it cut. So I'm just setting this, I'm in incremental right now. I'm just going six thou above. Uh, if you were setting off absolute, that's just as fine too. For today and for this demo purpose, we're just showing, you know, kind of the operation and we're just gonna take a little bit more out of this. So I've got it set to six thou. With these, I always like to double check. So I'll spin away and come back and touch, make sure I'm repeating. It's even a good idea to sometimes take this guy out, place it back in and just make sure, um, because you can have some variance in this. Sometimes you got a little dirt in here or this spring moves on you. So I'll grab this. Again, carefully put it in. Now, 
This is where if you're confident in your setup and you're confident on your number and you've watched that one, you can go ahead and turn them all on. We'll let this run a whole bank. You can just see in here. Cut looks nice and even. It's something to watch, especially on your first one. If all looks good, you can let it run. You'll notice the cutter indexes. So it's gonna pick when it gets done with the bore. It's always starting and stopping right there in that split line so it doesn't leave a witness mark. All right, so that concludes uh, part three here on our line bore video series. Hopefully you found that enjoyable. Um, I'm gonna bring the camera in. We'll take a look at the surface finishes so we can see on camera, nice cleaned up mains all the way down. Automated cycle, complete CNC line boring. And you can see in that last shot here, how that index is to split it in that line right there between the cap and the block. It's gonna pull back out with the insert each time so you don't leave a witness mark. So again, if you have any questions on that, you can reach out, uh, leave a comment, like the video, uh, reach out to me personally. Uh, my email is ryan at rotler, R-O-T-T-L-E-R-M-F-G.com. Um, and we'll see you next time and uh, happy machining.